As we come along in here, this is my dad. And this is his room. Ben, stop for a second. Why did you choose to buy a camera when you had a family? That's a good question. Why did I choose to buy a camera when I had a family? I don't know, I just wanted to record things so that uh, when my sons, you and Alexander, were older, you know, you'd have some memories to look on. And I think probably the fact that my father took so many videos probably had some impact on that decision as well to do the same thing. This is the house and the street I grew up on in Perth, New Brunswick. Playing these woods back in the hills behind here. Did your um, mother ever record with the camera, or was it all your father? I would say it was all. My father did all the recording with the camera. I don't remember what uh, make or model the camera was. I just remember that it had for indoor shots. It had four big floodlights mounted on the top, and they were quite hot. That's why you see us squinting in some of the pictures. On the birthday party were a bunch of my friends and you see us all roughhousing and stuff. And I don't really remember any of those friends for much. But you just wondered what happened to all these people, how they turned out. How do I open it? Simple, you rip. Just you cut the tape. Oh, I'm not sure if I didn't use my knife. <laughs> Lots of Kleenex. One thing. That's yeah. great. I need Kleenex for my nose <laughs> Good present. Huh? My father worked for a f five or six years in the summer times at a mine in northern Quebec, a place called Shefferville, originally called Knob Lake. So he first went up there probably around 1950 or 51, 52, something like that. And he worked building the railroad. In 1954, we moved up there, and uh, he was working then as a mechanic in the shovel department and then became a supervisor there. We were up there about four years, and my mother didn't like it, so we moved back, but he still went up and worked in the summers. And what was it like when you moved to Shefferville? Oh, it was great as a kid. It was all outdoors, lots of things around to play with, because there was all kinds of construction going on there, building the town site, so there were all kinds of scrap lumber and things kids could build things out of. It was a great place to play cowboys and Indians and, you know, have BB gun fights and things like that before people wore protective eye eyewear. And of course, you know, there was no TV up there. It's sort of quite isolated, really. It's quite a cold climate in the wintertime. You know, I think the temperatures have been down to minus 50 up there. Um, and we used to have to stop playing hockey outside at minus 30. So the summer of probably 59, my cousin Jim Ross and I went up to go to be with my father for a while. And we went out fishing. But one day we were in uh, Bowerings and we were looking at some jackets and... Uh, my father said how easy it was to walk out with the jacket, and my cousin Jim said, oh, you can't do that, so my father put the jacket on, and we walked out with the jacket. He used to smuggle guns in from the States and resell them in Canada, because the bakery was selling bread in Canada and the United States, into Fort Fairfield, Maine, so he was back and forth across the border a lot, so I think he wasn't above, uh, you know, not reading the fine print and from any rules. So, uh, you know, Christmas was ordering things out of the Eaton's or the Simpsons catalog because it was a small town and not much shopping. So that's usually where I ordered presents for my parents and my sister. And then it seemed my father never did his Christmas shopping till the afternoon of Christmas Eve when he was done delivering bread. So I remember going around to different stores with him while he was buying, trying to buy something for my mother. It was a Christmas dinner. Big, you know, the turkey and the potatoes and carrots and dressing and, of course, mincemeat pie and mocha cakes. We're having Christmas dinner. We are having some awful good stuff. I don't know what it's called. What don't you know? We're having turnip and carrot mixed. Why you turn dressing. Your when you're moving. Right? You're not even got it turned on. Tur yeah, it is. Turkey. Cranberry sauce. Fiddleheads. And potatoes. And gravy. And milk. Isn't this a wonderful meal? Yum! There was a story that when my parents first got married, they lived in Perth Andover, and the houses were on the riverbanks, so the back of the houses were supported on posts. My mother made my father a first cake, and she asked him how it was, and he said it wasn't as good as his mother's, so 
She picked it up from the table, opened the window, and threw it out in the river. He said he never said a word after that. What was your best memory of your father? I think the best memory, we were up fishing with my father and Uncle Bud and Uncle Fred up in the Galquak River north of Perth. We stopped for lunch and had ham. My Uncle Fred had cooked in the bakery and bre fresh brown bread and, and uh, mustard. Just a nice streamside feast. Did you go fishing with your father? Father and I did a lot of fishing together. You know, if you see some of the pictures uh, from up in Sheffieldville, where, we, you know, the fishing up there was like fishing in a fish pond here. You know, this you'd look down, you'd see dozens and dozens of fish, and you just had to be able to drop your hook in, give it a jerk, you'd catch fish. So, And then and as soon as we get back in the Brunswick, my father worked for a paving company, and uh, he was able to get enough materials out of there to build a camp eventually. So we were always up to camp on the weekends from... Uh, you know, the time the ice went out, we was picking fiddleheads and then go up fishing. And The only problem was the my father and his uncles and everybody was there, they were big drinkers. So you have to put up a little bit of drunk people, but uh, played a lot of cards, ate a lot of good food, had a good time. I think it caused a lot of problems for my mother because they would uh, sometimes disappear for a day or two on, on a bender, you know, being out drinking and not come back. You know, and this is the days before it was, you know, seat belts and breathalyzers, so there was a lot of drinking and driving going on then. Really don't have any stories of their benders, just more of the results afterwards. I was adopted and when I was brought home, my father was in jail. He'd uh, been out drinking and came across the bridge in the end over towards Perth and at the end of the bridge there's a T intersection with businesses on the opposite side from the bridge and he didn't make the turn, he ran into went through the door windows at the undertakers and then they put him in jail for it. Well I think he was just quite a rascal I'd say. Like he and his three brothers played hockey and they they were known for being quite quite a bit of fighters and I think they'd been brought up a little bit by themselves because one time my grandparents moved from Plaster Rock to Perth to open the bakery and they left the boys behind for a while so I don't know that might have been their style of living just wild and rough. Why were you never much of a drinker? Don't know why I wasn't a drinker. Availability wasn't the problem. It's just I think I saw how they re how they acted and something I didn't want to do. Never really drank with my dad. You know, as you know, when he got older and like to visit, maybe have wine for supper or a beer, but not not as any great frequency or quantity. Do you think you were the same kind of father as your father was? I think I tried to be better. Not that he was bad. I'm just saying to try to learn. I sometimes didn't have enough patience, I think. I'm glad that I had children later because I had more patience. And as a father myself, I think they're, what I would have done differently is, you know, taken a more interest in their activities, support them more in their activities, and just spend more time uh, doing whatever, traveling or outdoor activities, canoeing or sailing or whatever. Back tail rider from Skill Street. Here's driver number one ready. Takes the turn, doesn't have also the blood turn. Coming down here, and he goes, takes the ramp, and gets stuck in the ramp. You're done, bud. Um, I was working at Michelin, got a phone call, my father had died. And, um, one of the neighbors had, you know, come over, gone over. <laughs> one of the neighbors had gone to the house, you know, my mother must have called him over or something. But they saw the ambulance there, and then he called. Well, that's all we have is memories, Benj. You know, you're in Budapest, uh, other son Alex is in London. I think it helps to know where you've come from. That's sort of how you got to where you are. And knowing these stories, I think, helps in that process. Yeah, that's one regret, to, you know, that he died, you know, before you were teenagers. Would have been nice. Yeah. You take care. Bye. Bye, I love you. I love you too, Dad.